Yeah, well, just a question. You know the you know the number to this talk to is going into Pine Ridge, South Dakota. That's an Oglala Indian reservation. Did you guys know that? No, did not know that. Didn't know that. Actually, they, the ownership of, uh, I think, uh, talks you has since, like, I don't know, maybe a year, two years now? A couple it's years now, they, have, they just recently had new ownership. So. Yes, I owe Iotam hmm? owns it. Iotam. Iotam. Like and I don't know who those people are. Yeah, well, they're interesting. I talk to them. I have this very bad habit of researching everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I'm just fine. interested what goes into Pine Ridge. Indian Reservation because according to Glenn, Indians are from India. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how much he's talked to you about that. A lot. He's talked a lot about that. Yeah. Well, I'm just find it interesting. That's 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 Um, all you. That's all uh, evidence. We just that's noted, and you know, mm because you know I've because. When I first started talking to Glenn, it was on this platform here. It was about like like ten years ago, right? And now, when they had the new ownership, or they they changed the um, they basically uh, remodeled the the website. Everything from the beginning of our conversations, everything from the beginning when we first started talking was erased. I know. Oh. That's what the guy told me from 2015 back. What's interesting is that IOTAM website address is the first one is in Toronto, Canada. The second one is in Los Angeles. 7080 Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I find interesting. Yeah, when you go on the site and you'll see like the channels are promoted or, or most of the channels, the people that use it, uh, it will be religious people, all ecclesiastics. Mm-hmm. So, uh, they may mm-hmm. use it as some form of, um, I don't know, getting a message, certain messages or something across. Yeah, Jason Martin, the CEO of IOTAM, went to Queens University. Uh-huh. There you go. Yeah. And uh, Noam, Noam Tomasek graduated as an electrical engineer from McGill University in Montreal. Yeah. With Master oh. University, that's another one in Canada, this guy. Yeah. So, and then the Old Dominion University, this lady. Yeah, I find it very interesting. Well, anyhow, I'm going to repeat again. Did oh, did did um, Zach get on the site? Zach, you on? Because uh, I I threw you. I called him. Is he here? Oh yeah, I'm back. Okay. Yep. Um, I was going to say the night before Glenn died, or the the day before, I woke up in the early hours of the morning, and I had. I, I just it just woke me right up. I had the impression of Glenn lying down, and he raised himself up a little bit, and he said, "Tell Jennifer I have to go." And as far as I'm concerned, that message was transmitted to me through the cell, and that's when I knew. You know, I and I told Glenn that day or that evening. I told him in the evening on Saturday night. I get a call the next morning at um, at about five fifty eight in the morning from this Dr. Kamal over at Brockville General Hospital, and he said, oh, "I'm sorry to wake you with the bad news." You know, but Glenn is bleeding. 
internally, and he has um, lost his hemoglobin and hematocrit blood levels have gone down dramatically, and he is bleeding intestinally. And um, I don't, you know, we were scheduled to do liver biopsy on the 8th, which was Monday the next day. Um, but I don't think he's going to make it. And, um, you know, it's we're not able to, and we'll keep you posted as things move along. But that same day, I get a call, you know, at, I guess that was Monday morning. I get a call at um, on 12.05 my time that he had died. And that was 3.05, you know, where he was. And um, to me, that's the 3.05 is 8.0. And I don't know if, if that was creation's timing that day or and saying that's who killed him or if it was their timing and they timed it for that as a signal for them. Um, and he died on 12-8-19. On 1-8-20-20, he would have been 78. And you know, there's this whole connection between double numbers like that and death, and it's their stuff. So, and within an hour and a half of his death, I got a call from a guy, Dr. Dufour, who said he is the coroner. And I said, boy, they move along on this one. It's fast. And he's saying he's going to perform the autopsy. And um, I said, well, you know, Glenn wanted a liver biopsy. That was what he wanted. And he said, oh, we're not going to do that. There's no need for that. You know, he had liver cancer. The tests were conclusive. And I said, that's not what I heard Dr. Kamal say to Glenn because I was on the phone when Dr. Kamal was telling stuff to Glenn earlier in the week and they and Glenn had agreed and stated he wanted a liver biopsy the court wants a liver biopsy they want it in writing whatever these people put they want that in writing because that will go to the pineal court as evidence. And if they think that it's evidence that Glenn had a liver cancer, they are sadly mistaken because I could guarantee you right now that whatever was with Glenn's body from the time he died and where they took him and where what they did, the cell were present so they know. They know exactly what was done and what wasn't done. And they have their experts in that field, too. Just like they were present when John went into Z. Tom's body after he died over at Kempville, district hospital and a member of the cell stayed in that room with the body and watched from that point on. So it will be no different in this case. So um, this this is a cover-up And they're going to continue to try and cover up, but they can't. They believe they can. They can't. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, photos uh, of the old pictures.
pictures on the farm. Uh, and I think I see uh, Tom, but I'm not 100% sure. Is Tom like curly haired, black haired? No. 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 Mm. Older guy, gray beard. Yeah. Tom oh, had okay. um, white, white hair, long hair, and, and a, a beard, a big, long beard. And he always okay. wore a baseball cap. And he was skinny. So, um, yeah, um, Glenn told me, oh gosh, it must have been somewhere between the September and October, somewhere in there, that he told me that he was willing to die in order to stop these people, you know, and when when he said what he meant, stop them, is that creation is not, um, is making, you know, cleaning house right now. There are, there are people here and alive right now that are not going to be allowed to go into paradise. And they're not going to be allowed into the next universe because they are part of the problem here that messed this universe up. And this universe is broken and it is tainted by what they did. That's why it has continued to expand at an ever-increasing rate. It is directly linked to that. And... um, so in order for this whole thing to move on, these people have to be removed. And nothing can happen on the farm until they're gone and out of the way. So they will basically wipe themselves out or do themselves in because Creation is not going to kill them. Their God will kill them. But when they die, they're going to get in line. They're going to be waiting a long time. Now, I know that the Lou is coming, but I also know that there were arrest warrants put on a lot of people by the court. And so since their God is done with them, their God will allow things to happen with them. You know, um, however they die, I don't know, or when, but soon, I think. And then as soon as they go, they're going to get picked up and they're going to go put, be put in line and wait for their trials. So um, they think they have stopped this. They're going to keep trying to take the property too, but that will just add to their sentence. And um, it's all up in the air as to whether I become involved in that property right now because I have no idea right now whether that is something to try and ensnare me in something that is financially going to break me. That's what I don't know right now. So I'm waiting for creation to send word to me on what I do about that. Because right now I don't I don't feel uh, led, I don't know what's the right word, to um, just jump into it. I have reservations, and I suppose there's a reason for that. The promise to me was that when everything is done, when this is all done, 
I will be back on the farm. And I was promised 14 years together with Glenn. Now, these people don't know the reality of what death is, who the dead are and what they are and how any of it works. So they think that they got Glenn out of the way. They have simply released him to be more present. He can be anywhere now, just like the cell are, because he's the head of the cell. So he will be a problem now that they can't hurt anymore. They don't understand that right now. So I'm not, I'm relieved that he's not in pain anymore. And I realized, you know, and I, I went back and listened to this last episode that you, uh, you all did together with him. And I listened to the one before that. And from the one before that to this last one, something changed because he was out of breath when you guys were talking to him. And that's when those people were bringing him food. That's when they started being around. There was timing to all of this. I see that the CBC been putting some articles out about cancer and people dying quickly. And the one they put out today is a guy that's laying in bed in a hospital gown that's got lungs, you know, like silver hair and a silver beard and glasses. And I'm thinking, wow, what a coincidence. Not like a cover-up, right? Yeah. Almost like a cover-up, well, right? Yeah, and they're and they're just putting this article out about this guy that's decided he's going to die from he has um, end stage liver disease or end, excuse me end stage kidney disease and he's on dialysis and he's foregoing dialysis because he's not getting he can't get the treatment where he's living he has to go a, a long ways away to get it and he doesn't think that's right so it's his choice to um, die. And he will last about eight days, according to the article. And his last dialysis is on, I think, the 7th or the 8th. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's just too weird. And it cannot be coincidental. And we've seen the CBC do this stuff time after time, uh, at, you know, kind of mirroring what has happened with Glenn and myself over the years. And I don't know if they're assaging their guilt. Like, okay, we'll put out something like that, you know, because we can't put it out about them. Yeah, they could. Or something else, I don't know. But they're hypocrites. And they lie by omission. Okay, I've had my say. Well, when I spoke to Glenn, the last time I spoke to him in in the hospital, he, as soon as I heard him talking, like it, it was kind of difficult to understand him, and it was mm-hmm. he had a problem with his breathing. I yep. got it. It was it was really bad, and you know, me, I was trying to be optimistic. And he told me, um, yeah, I asked him, I said, how did this happen? Were you poisoned? What's going on? And he said, taxi drivers. Yeah, I know what he's talking about. And I said, I, I, how can I help? He said, it's too late for that. And I said, uh, you know, I want to see you again. And said, uh, I hope 
I see you. Hope I see there you there. Text- yeah, well, huh? there were two tax drivers giving him uh, food. One was named Ray, Kent Bill Taxi Service, and the other one, Pete. Okay. So they were giving him food. This has to do with Kim Little being there. And I don't, there's some kind of connection. So I don't have any idea right now. I I mean, I have some suspicion, but I don't have a good thing that I would say right now. But he had to be there. Whether he knew it or not. Yeah, well, Glenn knew, though. Glenn knew what was going on, and he didn't want to say to me, I'm dying. He knew. Well, he didn't want you to worry? He didn't want to want you to worry any more than you were? Well, it's kind of... uh, Death is a funny thing. Dying is a funny thing because you know you know. And the person might think they're trying, they're sparing you, but you know already. And I wanted the things said before that. Fine, there were some things, but there still will be a lot more things because I'll see them again, just like I see the cell, the American cell down here. So, you know, I just, the timing is everything. And Glenn talked about perfect speed. And perfect speed is being there. And so he will be here and he will talk to me when the time is perfect for that. The project on the farm will happen. It is going to be um, different. Not going to be any like anything that you would, you know, conceive of right now. And because the dead will walk there. And you may see them. Probably will. You may talk to them. Probably will. At their discretion, because as I've been told, you don't just get to call up the dead or conjure the dead. That does, that's not even the reality. If they talk to you, it's an honor. And it's because you earned it. So there is a place where life and death meet. And they mingle. And that is going to be the farm. That is the chosen point at which the appointed time The 12 people and myself will leave without experiencing death, and the cats go too. And some people will stay behind because they've chosen to, to finish up the job and here, and then we'll go later. Nobody should lose hope over what happened. And, you know, I have my dark moments. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I know. I have my dark moments. But I am holding on to what I was promised.
And I've seen too many, too many odd things that I can't explain. I know what you mean. I haven't seen a lot, a lot, but I have seen things in my life connected to that farm over there that I just, I can't really share with anybody because it's too, it's not something I can share. It's not like um, something I can prove. So, kind of just keep it to myself and, you know, maybe talk to other people who would understand, but. Well, there's hardly anyone (laughs) that that does understand. (laughs) Not many people, they don't understand. I mean, they uh, have Christianity real bad, or um, they got to try and and fit it into some kind of box. And I, I just, you know, I, I, I did my share of time listening to all of these people out in the conspiracy community and the New Agers, and, you know, I cannot, um, this doesn't fit into any of their stuff, not even close. It's absolutely unique. So... Uh, you know, I, I think about all the things that Glenn has said over the years, and some things I don't remember. I wish I remembered every single thing he said. But there was a lot of stuff. And some of the realizations that I started to make are now when he's gone. You know, and it it goes back to this whole thing that he always told me creation is a process. Not a person. Creation is a process. And this is a process. And it's a process for everybody. And nobody's process will be the same. Everybody has something in this that affects them. Everybody's got, you know, there's a meaning they grabbed on to something that Glenn said, and it meant so much to them, certain things. And it's stuff that they have to deal with. You know, and, and it means something in, in their growth, in their process. And Glenn was, he was the most gentle, kind man I ever knew. He was also first one to tell me, you know, to basically straighten up and fly right if I had any kind of negativity, which I went through a lot of that. He was the most honest man I've ever known. He was the most honorable man I've ever known. And these people that did this to him don't deserve to be anywhere in the same universe. They don't deserve it. And they will always be a problem. Therefore, they have to be dealt with.
Definitely. Yeah. I always, I, you know, for me, Glenn, this guy had so much integrity. Integrity was so important to him. And that really, that really affected me. It made me be a better man. He set an example. Yeah. And every, out of, you know, searching for truth, I've never seen anybody that even scratched the surface compared to the things he talked about. And I was... I was just like, just so, just shocked at how honest he was with me. There was no games. <sighs> Treated me like a friend. You know, when I first learned, when I first heard about it, it was really, it was kind of rough on me. But when I spoke to you, Johnny, it was, you made me feel better. You know, I was just, I was kind of surprised. I was, you know, I mean, you're really strong. And you reminded me that it's not the end. And that's something, <laughs> me and Glenn talked about that all the time. Mhm. Yeah. Well, there were many times in the past, years back, that, and he had told me, this was back in 2012, I think it was when I was stuck in Augsburg. He said these think tanks that dreamed up all of this stuff that they were, you know, doing to us even back then actually hoped because of uh, me being so negative and, and such a victim that I would actually um, drive Glenn crazy and that, that he would drop me or, you know, or he'd just want to kill me. That's how they were thinking. That's how these these groups they're so subversive, and they have, they have other think tanks, and they study the psychology of people, and they try to plan and strategize around that about what you know what they can drive someone to, and for years. You know, I thought, I can't do anything right. And pretty soon it fed into itself. You know, and and I was stuck. Stuck, just really stuck. I was stuck for years. And Glenn told me, Last week, one day, he said, you're in charge now, and the cell are depending upon you, so remember that. Now you're in charge. He told me that. And what it means, it's not like I'm telling them what to do. It's not it at all. 
it's just that now he's there and I'm the connection here. So all that takes from me, I believe, is to be willing. And I just kind of figure, you know what, if Glenn can die for this, then I owe it to be everything that I can be because I don't want to be in this place. I don't want to, you know, he told me many times, you know, if, you know, if it's not finished, this life, you'll have to come back. And, you know, when I thought of the description of how things were going, I don't want to come back. I want to just do it in this life. Whatever it is that has to be done, I just want to do it. Because I'm tired of this planet. And I'm tired of all of these nasty, evil people. And they are truly evil. I'm tired of it. I just want to get this done. And sometimes it feels like I'm fighting myself to try and do anything. But I need I need this done. And Glenn always told me that there were seven billion people waiting at the gate, waiting for all of this. And they're waiting, you know, all, there's a lot of people waiting that haven't even been able to enter paradise because it's been filled up with persons that don't belong there. And it had to be cleaned out. Well, that's been an ongoing thing. But, you know, that, that, that's one or two or three groups of God, different groups that I can figure out that cause that kind of problem because they're knowledgeable about all of this. And they figured out how to um, move things around to their benefit. So uh, myself, Around here. That's why I know this isn't about fighting the system. Because the system can't be fixed. You only fight something you think can be fixed or you think you can conquer. But it's too broken to be fixed. It's tainted. It's, you know, it's broken and tainted. You don't, this isn't about. This is not about, you know, fighting the system. It's about leaving this universe. That's what all this is about, leaving this universe. And that's the thing to keep in mind. Yeah, I, I, it's so it's so broken at it's like this core. I remember we were talking about you. Um, you were explaining to me um, about cats and how just you know the whole situation with them and how they're killed, you know, and and by vets and people put them to sleep because it's it's just another. Signify how how broken the system at every level you see it every everywhere you know, in the states over here we are seeing it and you know in the political stage they they're making sure it seems like they they want people to see this you know but mm-hmm. they you know with these people oh, i I don't know i they have their agenda as well, you know. So, but for, apparently for 2020, they, I'm seeing that, and there's a lot of people who believe. They call it the um, this is the age of awakening. 
and they believe like it's like it's going to be like better or something because they're being told now but they I don't think they understand that they're going to be gotten rid of they're going to mass murder a lot of people and the future that they have in mind is not uh, it's not something I I I look forward to as far as all the, the mass murder but I understand at the same time that these people who've been managing all of this that they they got to go cuz it's just Well, the people that are trying to stop the project are what is being focused on right now. That's the big focus right now. And the project has to take place. So that part I know about, that one has to happen. Those are the people that got to be got out of the way, the ones that are trying to stop this. And they thought when they killed Glenn, they stopped it. That's what they think. So, why are know, they so it, bent? Why are they so bent on to stopping it? Why do they want to stop it so that uh, they feel that threatened? What? Their power? Yeah. He, if you if you want to control everything, then you want to control some people that uh, their intent is to leave. And when they leave, the universe is closed, basically. And you're left with something that's going to die. You would try to control that. So it's not just some Freemasons or some groups that want to, you know, if if their intent was just for the property, you know, or, or so on, it, they will feel right now that they've done it. But it goes beyond that has to do with people or uh, troglodytes know that know that if certain people leave then they are not going to be going and they will be left here and they have a limited time left that they can reign because the universe will destroy itself. And they see far beyond what, you know, human beings see. Human beings, you know, don't see as far as these people. And as the universe expands, the galaxies are going to ever increasingly be apart from each other. And a lot of things will change. I I read something about that a a month and a half ago about what would happen if, you know, the universe keeps expanding. But at some point, everything kind of just, Results, and you know the anything that's living wants to extend their life, and, and they want to live. They don't want they want you know it's preser- self preservation. They want it, so they don't want to die, even though and even though it's probably hundreds of thousands of years away, but it's something, you know, they, they want a, an everlasting 
Rain. <laughs> Be in control. Control Those freaks. Control. Yeah. Control freaks. Yeah, that's just, that's how they are. They 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 always gotta have control. And I I think this computer that they have, right, that kind of manages it all. It's this it's yeah. running on that same program, right? Just control, control, control. Well, it will be spewing out all of the data about what's going to happen a hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, ten thousand years from now, a hundred thousand years from now. So there's a lot they know. Way in advance. Yeah. And the ones up on, on the surface here do their bidding. And and then we call them bosses or, you know, the ones in control here. But they listen to the ones down there. It's an oyster within an oyster within an oyster kind of thing. Or a cloister within a cloister within a cloister kind of thing. So that kind of situation, I believe, that is going on here. And I myself. You know, I'm, I've become more and more of a kind of. I just watch all this stuff around me, you know, on a on a day to day basis, and I just don't, you know, I don't feel like I watch a lot of things, I observe a lot of things, but I don't get involved in it because <laughs> it's part of. You know what? There is there is no um, you know there's a lot of petty stuff that goes on day to day. You know. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of, of stuff. People get all involved in this stuff, and I and I just anymore I look at it like it's a foreign world because I um, I uh, my mind is set on what has to be done and it's become more so and it's accelerated um, in the last few months and now Glenn is you know he's with the dead now so it's even ever more accelerated for me I want my I want to get things going I want to get done with all of this that has to be done here And that was the way that Glenn was. Yeah. You know, that, that he wanted... He was a man with a task to do. He had a job. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've gone through this life, let me tell you, with no home. Uh, and I lose people that really matter to me. It's been happening to me my whole life. Um, and I've had a lot of harassment. I mean, it's just continual. And then I have to say what happened with Canada. Boy, that's been oh so special. You know, um, I learned a lot. But all I can think of, and I watch all of this, and I think, you know, uh, I look at people around me and they don't seem to have a clue. And all I can think of is, you know, i got to get this stuff done. got to get out of here. So right now, I've been told to wait and take care of the cats. That's what I intend to do. Anybody else still there? 
Wow. It's only you yeah. and me? No? I'm here. Yeah, I'm still here. Dana, Dana and Dana real quiet. That's Dana. That's how he usually is. I'm uh I'm looking through photos that kind of remind me of, of Glenn as I'm listening to y'all. Like I found I found a picture of a seagull flying over New York. I'm just kind of pondering what y'all are saying, soaking it in. But thank you for <clears throat> talking on behalf of Glenn and what I kind of like what y'all are going with <clears throat> with uh, talking about the connection between Glenn's. Um, ideas and the ultimate opportunities we have with the universe and stuff. <clears throat> That's kind of what I like to think about, like what ultimately this all means kind of thing. Not to like wrap it up in one like thing, but you know what I mean? Hmm. Well, you're young and you've got a lot of, of um experiences that you have to go through. And Glenn always said life begins at 40 because that's what they say. Yeah. Huh. But life begins at 40 for a reason. But then he said something about 50 where it just gets better. And When I first started talking to him, he used to always tell me that life begins at 40. Yeah. But well, his life was so different he, though, right? It wasn't it wasn't he didn't really start realizing things till later on and really later on. Well when you when you're young you're busy having experiences. Mm. And so, after the age of forty you're gonna start to um you know, kind of start thinking about those experiences. Days of conscious. Days of conscious. Consciousness. So you have to have the experiences. You can't get out of it. No one's above the process. <laughs> Creation reveals it. Reveals. Or let, it tells you its secrets after a long period of time. And that's with everything. That process. No instant gratification. What you? What was it that you said? Creation hated, didn't like. Hypocrites, control hypocrites freaks. Hypocrites and control freaks. Got courts just for those people. That's the worst crime. Mm. And trophy and and hypocrite are the worst crimes. And I, I see a lot of that in the media, politics. It's nothing but hypocrites. It's in everything, hypocrisy. Like all the people who we're told we gotta respect and listen to, these people are hypocrites. Yeah, well, I've been told I would be, um, and I suspect because I have been, that this retired lawyer told me I was um, incorrigible. I would be considered incorrigible and not um, okay to be in Canada. Like, I would never be allowed. So you have your choice to be incorrigible or be a criminal, hypocrite, control freak. Cats are incorrigible. Can't train them. Can't control them. Can't teach them. I'd rather be a cat. I'm looking it up. Incorrigible. Enable, incapable of being corrected or amended, such That's as right. not reformable, depraved, mm-hmm. delinquent, not not manageable, unruly, unalterable. Oh, that's, tena- that's tenacity, right? 
The word they come up for people like you. Yeah, apparently. Who would all want to swallow that bullshit? (laughs) I asked. I asked this person, "How how come you didn't help me?" Glenn called you and asked when I was in jail up there for your help, and he didn't help. Why didn't you help me? And he said, this whole thing, it's just too dark, too murky, too much. And um, you would have been considered incorrigible. Never allowed, really, to enter Canada. And since that time, from what I can pick up by listening to this person talk, this is someone who has lost all of the interest and enjoyment in living. Sounds old, sounds tired. He did say to me, I am ready to die. He said the Canadian system of Um, the legal system here is corrupt beyond measure. It's all corrupt. He said, I couldn't even deal with it anymore. I didn't even renew my license. I can't deal with them. That's what this man told me. And I said, you know, you're living uh, right in the path of all the water. From the loo, and he said, "Oh, that thing where Lake Superior is, all this water is going to come out of there." I said, "Basically, yeah, you're living in the path of it." He said, "You know what? I don't even care." He said, "I'm ready to die. If it comes, fine." Jesus, Jesus, he's been broken. Sounds like something happened. I mean, a lot of us are broken. A lot of people are broken. The broken system. That's what they do, right? They try to break you. And they abuse you. Break your will. Well, this was somebody who had been RCMP. And he became an attorney. He did the legal paperwork for Canadian Institute to incorporate it. And uh, then at that time, he was working for the OPP, some kind of investigations for them. And Glenn had contacted him and asked that he help me. I don't know what they did or what they said to him. You know, I don't know if he was threatened, because that's a lot of times how it works and get threatened. I don't know what happened. Um, but this is someone who sounded like she's done with everything now. I imagine the OPP headquarters will be buried underwater, too. Yeah, didn't they, um, I'm not sure if it's Bell headquarters or OPP, but one of them got, no, it was OPP, I think. They got moved years ago, right? They they're, right they're, in the past. Yeah, they're in Aurelia, and that's right, right there. So... They're going to, and they've been given many chances, and they've been told, but they can't hear it. Glenn, you know, I, 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 you know, he told me when he was in the hospital that all these people appeared, and 
he looked up in the yard and there were ambulance, there was an ambulance and fire truck and he said it looked like high up OPT people. And um not just the run of the mill officers and they all came there. And he thought that this was them showing concern for the first time. And I didn't say anything. But that is not what I thought. And the letter, or the email that I got from Ms. Runciman, you know, said that it sounded like, oh, well, you know, he made the choice to go. And I said, I, you know, I knew the truth of it. He was told, if you don't come, if you don't, you know, go, we're going to arrest you. And that's why he went. But I don't say much to Glenn at that point because Glenn was really trying to think that these people maybe turned a corner or something and they changed. And I have my doubts, very strong doubts about that. And it's just, you know, beyond, I mean, beyond coincidental that that, that Senator Bob Runciman's daughter is OPP in Brockville and is involved in this. It, it It's, you know, I keep going, dang, because he's one of the four people that would have appeared at Bob's motel. And that's what the investigators said in 2016 when I was supposed to be there. And uh, I would have been murdered. Sounds like their genetics, like father, like daughter, man, to me. That's what it sounded like to me. So they're both like civil servants, right? That's the common denominator. Mother, uh, father, oh. and daughter. I think senators in Canada have a lot of of. Uh, freedom to to be involved in something I don't know at another level. I don't you know, I don't even pretend to know too much except senators seem to have a answer to different parties than like an MP. Um, I don't think MPs have any power, really. But um, that whole system, that what bothers me, that system is that, that it's they build themselves as as democratic. Well, that turns out not to be such a good thing. So <laughs> we've got Democrats here, and they all seem to be alike. Yeah, they're, they're most likely to be bureaucrats, right? Yeah. Um, it seems um, that it, it's, they have a different agenda than what people think. <laughs> I noticed in Canada they have like, like a, it's like, um, they have like a, they don't, I don't think they call them Democrats up there, but they call them like, they have like a liberal and they have like a ultra liberal and well, they have, they have the more, huh? they have the NDP, they have the NDP, yes. the liberals, um, and the progressive conservatives. Those are the three major parties. Then there's the Bloc Quebecois oh. and there's a few others, but, um, the Green Party, and I think there's two or three others. Um, but the NDP, Glenn always called them the 1789 gang, which meant bourgeoisie or uh, bureaucrats. 
that. And um, he had a lot to say about the liberals versus, you know, the conservative progressive or progressive conservative party. But the only common denominator with all that is that it's bureaucrats that run the show in Canada and that the politicians are all cosmetic. They don't do anything and they have no power. Yeah, they just argue. They, <laughs> they like they like their their headlines and, and and whatever their office does that gets something done and then they get to take the credit for. So, you know, it's like and I I said it before, I in an article it's an Ouroboros eating itself. That's all that whole thing is up there. Yeah, they well they tell you who they are, like when you when I watch the the politicians here, like the ones who are say against the president uh Trump over here, like they they call themselves the resistance. And that that's in reference to like France and the French Revolution. And they you know, they talk about the fourth estate which is the news. This this whole structure they have, that's all based off of that revolution. Now, well, all of them are following their their DNA. So you'll see by what they, what group they gravitate to, and all the kind of things they do and the things they say. You will find what group you know where their DNA is from. Do you think that it's really because it seems like it was it was being talked about like that whole network of um, those abusers, sexual abusers? It seems like they were uh, mentioning it and talking about it with uh, with that Epstein guy, and it's like almost hinted at that they were would be kind of bringing it to the sort of letting people know. Is that, you think that will be part of that 2020 um, agenda? I don't know. I, you know, I know what the cell told Glenn and Glenn talked about is that in 2020, you will all see clearly why things are the way they are in this world on this planet in the, in the systems you're going to find out I think there's a lot of major revelations coming I've been told that there are 20 journalists um, not you know from different parts of the world that will be putting articles out and putting stuff out about what happened with Glenn and myself. And um, I know there's a book that will be published after the Lou. There's a book. And um, I know that they had talked about different names for the title, and one of them was Who Killed America? But I'm not sure in the end what it will be titled. But that's going to come out as well. And I'm sure there's a lot more than that, but I, you know, I'm it's, I'm not privy to that information. Weren't they, like, yeah, from what I remember speaking with Glenn about that, is that they wanted to have this book, right? But they wanted to kind of frame it that, you know, it's all America's fault and to justify the destruction of America. The whole um, this is a book that Glenn wrote many years back. So I don't know any more than that. I don't know who is the publisher. I know that that's a reason that my friend Arthur Omoto was murdered because he had given Glenn a specific amount of money out of the blue when I was first here and had talked 
and, and wanted to give it to him and, and Glenn, I guess there's some talk somewhere with him in the cell about that Arthur was um, had something to do with a company or some Japanese group that wants to publish the book. Arthur and Glenn had talked when I was still in jail at OCDC in September, when I was there in September, and I didn't come here until November 2nd, but they had talked about um, what, how to, you know, how could Arthur help me, and it was going to be dependent on where they dumped me, because I was told, they, well, we're either going to put you in New York or Nevada or California, I haven't decided what yet. Was it done to induce fear and terror? Was it done because they were trying to figure out what they were going to do with me and what? how would they handle me? I don't know which. In the end, when I was sent, there was a packet of papers that I still have that were handed to me. And they were all these homeless shelters. And the one they picked out that they want, that, that was tagged and they were sure the police, which I was handed over to, were going to um, take me there or put me on a hold and take me somewhere and then take me there, which it didn't work. But the place picked out was called Bell. And... Um, Bell Homeless Shelter run by the Salvation Army. But that didn't work out the way they thought it would. And Arthur is responsible for that. And I know that two members of the cell came to question Arthur. They went and, and they had a they went to see him before I was down there and they asked him what his intention was toward me. And they talked about the whole thing. I don't think that Arthur knew it was the cell. But they came and talked to him. It's for for reasons like that and 10 million other reasons that I know that these people are going to be stopped. They can think whatever they want and they can do, go ahead take the property, go ahead and do it all because everything that you do is going to count against you in the pineal court. Go for it. And it'll come right back to creation. And I'll be there. They can do what they want. Do you think it's possible that uh, we could fight for that, you know, just for that farm? Like, just... Why fight? Creation's always got it handled. I'll know. I don't, you know, I will know uh, at the right time what to do. But if you want to make sure that somebody gets the ultimate penalty, you let them do what they're going to do. Give them enough rope to hang themselves? (laughs) Yeah. Go ahead. Make my day.
Well, I'm not, you know, I've been contacted, a uh, message left for me from the bylaw people in Kempville. I have someone trying to contact me from the OSPCA, Ontario uh, Provincial Society for Prevention of Coolness of whatever to animals. They're the door openers for the OPP. Um, and they want to come on the property. I'm not going to give them permission to come on the property. I'm not going to have anything to do with that. They want me to say, oh, yeah, the cat. And you know what? It breaks my heart because I love cats. I love them so much. But I can't do that. I know how my daughter was used and has been used to do stuff like that to me. And that's how they're trying to use the cat situation. But you know the cats belong to creation and the cats know that. And the cats accept whatever is going to happen. And I've been told that. Cats are smarter than we are. And I've been told that. So if they want to trespass on the property, let them. Because I want them to get the ultimate penalty. They deserve nothing less. Punishments. Huh. Anybody have anything to say? Hello? Yeah, I'm here, but I don't know if anyone else is. <laughs> No, I'm still here. Uh, just listening. I'm still here. <clears throat> Dana, you got anything to say? It's just that you can only wait and see now. You know, everyone knows what's been going on, what's been done. We've been told by Glenn what's to come. Everyone is just looking, listening for their instructions. I'm good in that, you know. I'm going to do You know, I'm just, like, thinking, I think about, like, how many people actually know, like, what's going on. And I feel bad, like, there's people who, of course, I feel bad for people who are just completely oblivious and, you know, not their fault. But I feel bad for the people who are looking, you know, and <laughs> they won't have a guy like Glenn that helps them out. I think you have to remember some of <clears throat> some of Glenn's talks have like 156 downloads two weeks after the talks are uploaded. 
Yeah, I, I think when I look at, like, who downloads it, I think it's, you know, people who actually, you know, generally listen to it, learn from it, and I know it's people on the other side. Yeah, but there's got to be at least another 20, 20 people that is not included in that that, that we haven't spoken to. Yeah. I got, you know, I get emails and stuff from people who, they ask about the newspapers and stuff, and they got questions or whatever. So. But a lot of people choose to kind of watch from, like, a distance. They kind of want to be anonymous. I guess, I don't know, maybe uh, fear. I don't want to deal with um, repercussions being yeah, associated with this stuff. Certainty. Certainly. Oh, they may have a family and all that stuff and that could be used against them. Which is why I think families uh, nail in the foot exist. Yep, it's just it's just there to can to just be exploited by a system. You know, I see people at work and they put up with so much crap. And when you say, "Hey, why don't you do something better?" They say, "I got kids. I got this. I got this. I got that. My wife and kids." Bad. I'll eat shit because, you know. And they just make it where everyone is just trying, trying to survive, you know. Yeah. Not too far away from being hungry. Like that perfect vibe. Right. That's why it's not about fighting the system. It's about leaving the universe. Yeah, you can't fight them. These are masters of war. That's what Glenn would say. Was, you know, like this, this place is designed like this. So, you know, how you react in this world is what how you're judged, you know, given all this you know, stuff that they toss at you. And there's so many opportunities to be corrupt and to be like this or be like them. And if you still choose not to and you still try to make someone's life better or, or the world better, it's just laboratory. <laughs> yeah, it's like they want to they wanna make you a better slave, you know. Just... Which means kind of killing you, your humanity. I think I remember Glenn saying something like that. They would test him to see the decisions he would make. You know, put him to experience to see the decision. You know, in all his reincarnations, they would test him, like, see if he would, you know, support the system. I guess that's what it is. Like, they, there's... Those people that you see who question, like, how can they do this? Like, they've been so engineered to just be that perfect slave. I can imagine what the future slave is going to be. It's, it, it's going to be no, uh, it's, it's going to be, I don't think there'll be any chance of it being like a uh, free thinking uh, individual. I think individuality is going to be out the door. Going to be connected to this computer. You know. And it won't really have its own thoughts. 
the Borg. Yeah, exactly. Now, now it's just not even. <laughs> I mean, they show you in the science fiction, like uh, you know, they give you clues. Now it's all about bringing us all back together again into this one. Of, uh, but I mean, it's still Borg, still Borg in the sense that they're, all, they're still mindless. I mean, it's like when you program, but there's you know, there's more of a chance. There's more of like a chance of uh, people, you know, breaking away from that. But what yeah. I'm saying with this new slave, I, I don't think there's going to be a chance. Well, you know, you know, creation always finds a way, right? <laughs> Doesn't <laughs> need much. Well, creation is leaving the universe. By the time they have their product, creation not here. This is the last, in this time period that we're in right now, the last, you know, 40 years that they've got planned is less than 40 now, I guess. Um, that, well, it's about 40. That uh, before, or by the time this last event takes place around somewhere 19 or 2058 to 62, that somewhere in that time period, the creation has left this universe and taken those that are waiting at the gate by that time, they're leaving. And they're just sitting farther forward in this football-shaped universe than we are. And from what I understand, that end of the universe is not closing down like the end of a football because of what they've done. It just continues to expand. But the idea is that we're in the last four years here of this, of this universe where, you know, creation is here and things the the northern hemisphere is still around because in forty years the northern hemisphere will have been shut down. So that's why I keep saying it's not about You're breaking up. You broke up. Yeah. I Me? Yeah, you were breaking up. I didn't understand. Oh. Ed, it's not about it's not about fighting the system or trying to change anything here. It's about leaving the universe. And that's what this project that's going to happen on the farm is part of that. And if if they come in and they raise the house and they take everything off the property, it's still not going to change anything. Creation will still get the property back. The court will get it back. And there will still be a project there. And they can't stop that. That's still happening.
and I have not heard otherwise. Um, oh, so do you want to do this type of thing uh, once a week or every other week? Or just you want to do it whenever, I guess, we're all free? Or? Well, we'll play it by ear. And I don't I think that there's still stuff going to be happening over the next few weeks, too. So, but then again, who knows what happens with world events? Yeah. I think North Korea promised the U.S. a special Christmas present. <laughs> oh, gosh. Of course, they always get that going whenever... They want people to look at something else, get them, get them focused on North Korea. You know, have you seen like all that stuff with, with, with China and stuff, like with the spies? And that reminded me, like, because apparently this, this is battle because China has, you know, steals all this intellectual property from the U.S. and they have spies you know, stealing information, and it just, you know, and apparently, um, you know, Trump's like, oh, trying to stop that, but I, in my mind, I think the reason that is, is because that whole, when we, when uh, Marco Polo took all the information from uh, Asia and brought it to Europe, which created the Renaissance period, all that technology, this is their way, this is all that spying and intellectual pride, that was them retrieving all of that, all that information. Mm. But yeah, it's painted on the political stage, like, you know, kind of stealing, but I think they're just getting back what was theirs. Well, I think they they also promised the after the opium wars, that there was going to be pay with payback for that, too. Yeah. Didn't that, like, create, like, families, dynasties that are, like, now, that, that whole opium war? I, mean, I think John Kerry, I think his family was involved in that, I think. Yeah, you know, it was profitable for everyone. <laughs> but it's, it's uh, drugs and money. Bribes, drugs, money. That's... China makes a lot of money off of drugs off the U.S. Fentanyl and all that stuff. So. Well, Canada, TBA make a lot of money, too, because they're the biggest drug smugglers on the North American continent. Who? And the CBSA. Oh, yeah, of course, because they, they're at the border. So when it all comes through, it has to go to them. No, those are small time. They're dealing with Syrian Maronite priests in Lebanon. And they were infiltrated with Iranians, too. Uh, Iranians within the CBSA um, were responsible for my, what happened to me. CBSA told me Sounds like uh, they got disconnected. I'm looking at the screen. Dana is gone. And I think he passed around. Yeah, it says left call. Yeah, something happened. 
Pump. I guess I'm that sorry. could be a segue out, right? That's Yeah, perhaps I'm super tired at the minute. <laughs> sorry, I haven't said much. Yeah, I kind of just want to say um, it was wonderful meeting such a unique person. Glenn is always going to be in our hearts, and uh, uh, his legacy is sealed, and no one will forget him, whoever has heard of him. <laughs> That's for sure. Probably so. not. Sorry about that. Mm. Both you guys have difficulties. Well, we're on the same line. Well, I was I, I was gonna end it. It's almost uh, got half an hour to ten. Yeah, <coughs> I gotta fix food for cats here. Cats are have to eat dinner. How many cats do you have? Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Have enough. I got some spoiled cats. <laughs> hmm. You ever watch those cat videos on the internet? Funny. Oh yeah. I've seen some oh, yeah. bogged out stuff that cats do. Like it's just like. Strange things that they do. I think I have a shoe talk listener who uh, has been emailing me cat pictures and stuff. So, <laughs> kind of opened my eyes to how weird cats are. <laughs> like they make like they can make like certain faces. Some of them like just strange. I had a weird experience with my cat last night. I woke up to go to the bathroom and my cat was in this position down the hall. Went back to sleep for another hour. I woke back up and he was in exactly the same spot looking at me the exact same way as I was an hour ago when I woke up. (laughs) It's kind of funny. I was like, wait, did I go back to sleep? (laughs) Your cat has you psyched out. <laughs> when I used to, when I was on the farm last, there was just one cat that used to just walk with me when I would like at night and stuff. And I'd go out in the front by the raft. He would just follow me. One cat. I like to think that he was probably just looking after me or something. Mm. I think they're all thinking of you, man. Any one of them. (laughs) Some may think you're a little off. Some may want to get to know you better. (laughs) I mean, I see a lot of cats doing my, my job day to day. A lot of them run away. Some are really friendly. I'll have to mail y'all like a postcard with all the cats on it one day or something. Christmas card. <laughs> cool cat. Cool cat. Hmm. Background sound. 
I got to start getting food ready for cats here. Okay. Well, guys, I'm going to have to go. I have things I got to take care of now. All right. Well, uh, I guess we'll do this again. Um, Good night, guys. All right, man. Thank you, and uh, I hope everyone feels all right and hang in there. Yeah, thank you all. Eventually. All right, everyone. Bye Bye. for now. (laughs) Bye. Bye. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Oh